All right, y'all, I'm ready to jump into the Word. Anybody, anybody glad to be in church on a Sunday? I'm glad to be in church on a Sunday. I just, I have these moments where, um, especially in these early days of our church and trying to work through the grind of, man, let's get people in the room, let's reach people, let's market, let's do all we do and dealing with uh, not always what looks like what you thought it would be. I have to remind myself as I'm driving in on a Sunday morning, it's 5.30 a.m., I'm driving in and it's dark outside and I'm drinking a bang and I'm just listening to worship music as loud as I can. And I just was thanking God that I get to, I get to go do church. And not, I, I don't get to go to church, I get to go do church. I love that. And that's my goal out of today's message. And online, if you're watching, share this with somebody and I encourage you in the room, share this with somebody after the fact because this is something that we need. I'm gonna strengthen us. Uh, most of us who are in the room are involved in this thing some form or fashion. And if you're watching online, there's a few of you guys who are already involved in some form or fashion. We shout you out all the time. We're gonna tell you more about that online and what we're doing in 2023 next week in Vision Sunday. But get somebody in the room. If we've never met and you're just tuning in, my name is Kevin, and along with my wife, Megan, we're the pastors here and just a young church plant aiming to grow and reach people for Jesus and do some great things here in our city and hopefully right there where you're at is our aim. So thank you for being a part of the ride with us. A few things that are coming up that you gotta know about, like I said, Vision Sunday next week, Legacy Sunday the following week. I'm gonna unpack that more over the next couple weeks, but it's something where we all get to come in together and so into what God's gonna do in 23 and beyond. It's been an up and down ride and journey and it's crazy what God has already done. I'm gonna report back to you everything that has happened over the first you know, year plus of our church and then where we're going in 23. We got some excited, exciting announcements we're gonna roll out. I can't wait to tell you all about them. It's gonna be good. So you just gotta be here for Vision Sunday. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And kids will have a great time as we kind of dig into the Christmas season. How many of y'all are like, it's Christmas time now? Thanksgiving is over? Yeah. It's Christmas time. For me, it was Christmas time a week before, but it's all good. It's Christmas time now for everybody. And so we're gonna kind of be in that festive holiday spirit. I'm pretty excited about it. But we wanna make sure that we are building the vision of our church. Now, I'm just a firm believer that we don't exist to come to church. We exist to build and be the church. That's why we exist. And that really is the Great Commission. I was telling somebody earlier on the team about kind of my, my title for next week's message, Envision Sunday. And I thought, that's a little like, Punch, kind of punch him right in the gut or right in the face kind of message, but it's the gospel. It's Jesus is like, go all in. I, I called you to the great commission. We talked about this a few weeks ago, the commission, which means we have a, a mission that we get to be a part of. So when you said yes to Jesus, yes, you're saved, but that's the first step. The next step is get in the game. Let's build the church together. And that's what we aim to do here at Trove Heights. So I'm gonna give you a message today that I actually preached this about a year and a half ago. And uh, I, I just felt like it kept coming back in my spirit that a lot of y'all weren't here then. If you were watching online now, you might not have even been around then. And so this is a message that leads us right into the Vision Sunday and Legacy Sundays that we have coming up. And it's just a reminder to get in the game. Take, take another step forward. If you're like, man, they're always asking me to do something. I, I look, I don't need you to do anything. God asks you to do something. God asks you to dig in and make a move and more sacrifice. And Because I'm a firm believer that with God, you don't go from success to success. You go from sacrifice to sacrifice. God's always going to ask you to give more. And it's usually in those moments where you start getting comfortable you, and you start saying stuff to yourself internally like, I do, I do a lot around the church. You start saying stuff like that to yourself. That's when God's going to go, I think I got a little more I can give you. And you're like, God, hold up. I was just getting a little comfortable. He's like, I know, time to give me more. That's been the journey that I've been on now for the last 10 years or so. And I'm gonna kind of unpack that with us. But we're gonna look in a book of the Bible called Nehemiah. It lands before Job and Psalms in your Old Testament, Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was a guy who wrote this book of the Bible. It's about 13 chapters. He wrote it in first person. So when you read the book of Nehemiah, you're, you're, it's almost like you're reading someone's journal that they wrote. So you see emotions come out in it. You, you can find out when he's mad. You find out when he's when he's conflicted, like, what do I do? And then moments where he stops, he pauses, he talks to God, like all that is in there. It's a really cool book. I encourage you to go read and check out for yourself because it's all about a, not only just a restoration process, but then a rebuilding process and a recasting of vision process. So it's a very important book of the Bible that'll speak to your life. But we pick up in the book of Nehemiah and the children of Israel, the Israelites had been exiled. So they weren't even able to be in their own country. They had been exiled. And they find their way back. And so Nehemiah, he was what scripture says was the cupbearer to the king. We're going to unpack that here in a moment. But he's living in the palace. He's got a good life. Everything is good. Everything's easy. He's got everything he wants. And then these guys come back who he's 
friends with, but he might not have seen them in a while. They come in and his first thing he wants to know is how are the people? How are, how are the children of Israel doing? How are we doing? And they basically give him this report in Nehemiah chapter one, where they say, look, they, they, they're back. They're back in the city, but the, the walls and the gates have been burnt and torn down. So they are, they are wide open and susceptible to attack. They are really, really in a bad place. Because here's the thing. This is a whole, whole side note. You can be home and you can still not be free. You, you can be in the church and you can still be wide open to the attacks of the enemy because you have no gates and security up. And so Nehemiah catches this heavy heart and burden essentially in the first couple chapters of the book of Nehemiah that he just has to do something about it. You ever had a moment where something comes to your attention? It could be in your family. It could be in your workplace. It could be right around you or it could be hundreds of miles away. You see it on social media through a friend or whatever, but you get a heavy heart. Like I just, I want to do, I got to do something. We all have those moments. And I think usually those moments are prompted by the Holy Spirit. When you see a need and, and God says, I need you to take care of that. I need you to feel it. We were all intrinsically wired that way to make a difference. The way we say it in our vision is we want to help you live a rich life. And the richest life you're going to live is when you are making a difference and you are giving yourself away for everything God wants to use you to do and needs he wants you to meet. And Nehemiah catches this burden. And so the title of my message today is this, blessed with a burden to build. Blessed with a burden to build. Now, that could sound like a little bit of an oxymoron. Blessed with a burden. Blessed with a burden. But I want you to know that if you were saved, again, it wasn't like just get saved and then live your life and go do what you, God has called you into this work. And this work is a grind. We preached it several weeks back about how this thing is a grind. Y'all, building a church plant is a grind. It, Sometimes there's a lot of people. Sometimes there's no people. Sometimes there's money flowing in. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes it's too early. Sometimes it's too late. Like there's always some, sometimes it's freezing cold outside. We're putting up flat. It's a grind. But every time that I remind myself of my firm foundation, I am committed to the grind. You know why I'm committed to the grind? Because I know what God has done for me. Anybody else know what God's done for you? I'm committed to the grind. And so I'm a firm believer that I can come in a room and it can be me and you or it can be a full room and I don't care who's in the room, I will remind myself of why I do what I do. And that's one of the biggest and best things you have to do as a Christian is remind yourself, what is your why? Nehemiah was, again, cupbearer to the king, living in the palace, he's got the good life. And when he gets this report, it reminds him of his why. Because you can be in a really good place and everybody else around you, they are in a horrible, bad place. Like you might have, you might be like, man, life is good. My job is good. My finances are good. Friendships are good. And then someone else walks in and starts telling you about how rough things are going right now. Every time I hear that and feel that, me, me and Megan do the same thing. And now it's part of our hearts as pastors of a church. I believe the church is called to make a difference. So when we hear somebody with a need, our first thought is, okay, how can we meet that need? How can we do something? We got to do something. Because here's the deal. You can't do everything, but you can do something. We as a church can't do everything, but we can always do something. And so I want to take that mindset today. In Nehemiah chapter one, again, they are exiled, but they have come back. This is where we're going to kind of pick up. I'm going to give you verse two. In Nehemiah chapter one, we're going to unpack this. It says, Han and I, one of my brothers, this is Nehemiah talking. He came from Judah with some other men and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province and are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. I think it's important to, to recognize in this story that he could have left it at, well, they came home, so it's all good. No, no more work is needed. They're home, they're gonna be okay. But he gets the answer on the back end of it. They're home, but they are in trouble. I think the church should be a place where we want to go to the rescue for people. You know why? Because we're on a search and rescue mission for the lost. We're on a search and rescue mission to help people come closer to Jesus and then meet tangible needs. Sometimes the best way that we can show people Jesus is to actually meet a tangible need. Uh, you guys did that so well. Some of you watching online helped with that by donating monetarily. We were able to provide Thanksgiving meals last week for over 50 families because of the way you guys grabbed bags and filled. I think that's huge. I think that's huge. We'll show you some of those pictures at the end of the service, but we're not only gonna come in here and say, hey, Come get into the presence of God. We're going to actually say, hey, let me show you what Jesus looks like. 
Let me give you a little Jesus in your life. I think Trove Heights is not only a place for people to come home, but it's a place for them to come home, find purpose, be set free, and then be set on a trajectory where their lives can be changed. That's what Trove Heights is gonna be. And I'm telling you, the vision in me has never been stronger than it is today. And it's that way, even in the midst of not seeing in front of me on a Sunday, what I thought I might see to this point. Because check this out. The enemy cannot take the vision God gave you. But he can cause you to step away and leave it. The only way the assignment God placed on your life does not come to pass is if you leave it. The enemy can't take the assignment from you. Scripture says in Romans eleven twenty nine 29, that the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. That means on your life, whatever God called you and purposed you to do, it's irreversible. Nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. But you can walk away from it if you choose to. So today, my hope is that maybe I can remind some of us of our assignment. If you're watching online, I can remind you of our assignment. If you're tuning in online right now and you're a week behind on this thing, I'm gonna remind you today of your assignment. You have an assignment. You've been blessed with a burden to build the house of the Lord. And that's why we're here today. So you gotta know that God needs people. So in order for it to be a place where people find home and then find a place where they can work out their yesterdays and settle all that stuff and find freedom, we do that in small groups. We, we go on a journey to search deep, find more and live a rich life with Jesus. God needs people to, to make this happen because scripture says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we have a laborer problem, not a harvest problem. So as I look around and you can look around with me, we have a lot of empty seats. It's a big room. We knew it was a little too big for what we probably were gonna need in the early going. But at the same time, we thought, wow, look what God has blessed us with. And I believe what he's saying is, look, the harvest is out there ready, but we need some laborers who are willing to go say, hey, come in with me and let's fill these seats. And I'm gonna give you a picture to paint this, I hope today, that makes you go, man, how can we fill the seats? I'm determined to do that. Me and Megan are constantly inviting people. I could be out in public and people, people just ask me, what do you do? And I'll be like, oh, let me tell you, I'm a pastor of a church. Actually, you should come this Sunday, 1030. I just start speaking. I'm gonna invite you no matter what's going on. Like, we can do this together. And statistics show that the best way to get someone to come to church is a personal invite. It's the best way. So we're doing marketing. We're running ads on social media. We're gonna do a big mail piece after we get in the front, front, front end of the year. And we're gonna just invite the community out. And we're gonna do our best to build through those avenues. But if we're not careful, we'll leave it all up to that and we won't do any work. Y'all ever heard the, uh, <laughs> you ever heard this statement? It's like, pray like it's up to God and work like it's up to God. Y'all ever heard that? I'm like, I think we pray like it's up to God and we work like it's up to us. What if we took that approach? I'm gonna pray like it's up to God. I'm gonna give him my all and then let him do what he wants to do through whatever I give. I think that's the approach we need to take and that's what we're gonna look at. So a few things that happen in the scripture passage. The first thing, I'm gonna give you three points today that'll help you. Most of you in this room have already done this. If you haven't, my hope is that today you start here. If you're watching online, we have ways that you can start right here. And that is first, if you wanna have this burden to build that God is gonna bless and bring fruitful and multiplication into your life, then it starts with this, you gotta answer the call. You gotta answer the call. And that's exactly what we see Nehemiah do in this scripture passage is he gets this report and he says, you know what? I gotta do something about it. He answers the call. You know, God needs all kinds of people to build his church. Like he needs people with a PhD and a GED. Like he needs people who have no tattoos and people who have neck tattoos. You know what I'm saying? Like you got, you got lips on your neck, you can build the kingdom of God. It don't matter. Like God needs people to build his kingdom. And we said this from day one as we moved here and started building a launch team and trying to do this thing in the middle of COVID. When churches were shutting down, we were like, hey, why don't we go start a new one? That'll be cool. Look, here we are. We said this from day one that it takes all types of people to reach all types of people. I can reach people you can. You can reach people I can. But I'm a firm believer that we should be bold in our faith. We should be bold to talk about Jesus. We should be bold to invite people to church. Would y'all agree that we have a pretty awesome worship team up here? Would y'all agree? I, I'm just blown away. Would y'all agree that we have a pretty awesome production team back there? I think, we got a, I think we got a pretty, pretty awesome team. I think we got an awesome kids team. I think we have a pretty amazing Sunday experience. Do y'all agree? I think it's a good Sunday experience that we have. Now look, I've been a part of big church. I've been a part of big production and big lights and all the shows. I've stood on stages in front of thousands of people. And every Sunday I go home and I tell Megan, I'm like, 
I cannot believe the team and the talent and the experience we have. When you look at the amount of people who are in the room on a Sunday, I'm like, it is primed and ready for what God wants to do. I'm just telling you, it's primed and ready for what God wants to do. You know how we bring that about is we go build. We go invite. We go get people in the room. We pass out invite cards. We have stacks of invite cards out there. I just want to take the approach of, I'm going to answer the call. Whatever that looks like, sometimes we don't make a move or we don't answer the call because we don't know how to. So we want to make it as simple as possible for you here at Trove Heights to do those things, join the team, and then just be a part of everything that's happening. And so on the front end of today, I'm going to give you what's called the 12, I'm going to give you a 12-month challenge. All right, last week I gave us a seven-day challenge. Anybody take the seven-day challenge? Anybody remember that? Start every day with the first 15, but then spend five minutes thanking God in praise and worship. I'm telling you, it changed my life this week. Seven-day challenge. I like to give you these challenges because I want to give you some practical stuff that I help you between the Sundays, but I'm gonna give you a 12-month challenge today. Here's the 12-month challenge. Do everything the church has to offer, whether you're in person, online, do everything we have to offer. Commit to, I'm gonna do it all. I'm gonna come to church every Sunday unless I'm deathly ill or I'm out of town. I'm coming to church I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the growth track. I'm gonna get in a small group. I'm gonna join the dream team. I'm gonna show up at the thing for 12 months. If you give God, you give the church one year of your life, I, I'm gonna make a guarantee to you today that your life will be better than it's ever been. I'm gonna guarantee that to you. So the only way to know is you gotta take the 12-month challenge though. I'm gonna give you a 12-month, I'm gonna talk about that every week leading into 2023. And I'm telling you, God will do something big in your life. We are all on a search and rescue mission, man. I, I, I am where I am today because I had people that were committed to pour in no matter what. Bro, if I got to come to your house, I will come. to. Like, I remember people be like, hey, bro, come to my small group. I can't. You know, Wednesday night's tough. Well, how about Thursday? Ah, Thursday night's tough. How about Sunday? Sunday night. Oh, every night's, every night's tough. You know what? I'm going to come to your house. Like, that was the approach. And I just had people that were no matter what, they weren't going to leave me alone because Jesus didn't leave us alone, y'all. Jesus, it says that he came to seek and save the lost, which, which means like, what if, what if you didn't show up on Sunday and I came, I knock at you, you show up and you're like, pastor, what are you doing? I just want to see how you do it. I'm seeking, I'm seeking you out today. That'd be weird. We don't do that here at Trove Heights. But there are times I think about it. I'm like, it's been two, three weeks. Where are they at? I, I, told, I told many people on our team that um, if you see me not in the gym for a couple weeks, you should come to my house because something is probably wrong. Like if I start seeing something out of place, or the priorities aren't in line, it, usually it's not, well, they're bad. And it's not, well, fine, let's leave them. Alone. No, we are here on a search and rescue mission. That's what we're here for. So if you are a little broken today or not where you want to be, this is the perfect place for you. And your life will change on the other end of just digging in and saying, man, I, I need, I need y'all. I need y'all. We're going to do that together and watch what God does. This dude, Nehemiah, he was the cupbearer to the king. So essentially what this means is every day when they would bring the king in his palace, when they'd bring him his lunch and they'd bring him a cup of wine, Nehemiah's job was to taste the wine to make sure that it was fit for the king. So what this looked like is the wine would come in and every day Nehemiah had to look at the... Lord, right now, if this is my last breath, like he had, to, he had to take a moment because he was in charge that if something was, if like the, the wine was poisoned, he would drop dead and not the king. I'd say that's a little bit of a stressful job. Anybody else? I, I don't know that I would want that job. But part of him having this job was you get, to live, you get to live this good life. You get to live in the palace. You got everything you want. He had direct access to the king. Like life was good, but it was stressful. And you see, as he goes into chapter two, that Nehemiah actually has a moment where he comes in and it says that he had never been sad in the presence of the king before. He had never been sad. Now, it does not say that he had never been sad. It says that he had never been sad in his presence before. So here's the deal. <laughs> I joke about this all the time, but I don't always feel like this on a Sunday when I come in here. There are sometimes I just look like this and in my head, I'm like, Lord, give me strength right now, Jesus. Like just, I need some strength right now. <laughs> because at the end of the day, God is looking for people who can step in. And as we say, we light up the room. That's a value. So it doesn't matter who's in the room. It doesn't matter what I feel like today. I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to handle my stuff before I walk in the room. Because God can use people who deal with their own stuff to try and then go help other people. But what we want God to do is do everything for us. But let me, let me just be down like I'm always down. I'm a, I, 
I don't know that God can just radically use negative people because God needs some people that want, that have something that people look at and go, okay, what is that? I want some of that. What do you, what you got going on? What you drink today? What you eat? Like we need to, we need to be people that have something that draws people towards us because this is the deal. If you neglect your priority, you will forfeit your provision. Like God gave, God gave us a priority of the great commission to build the church, to build the house of the Lord together. We get to do that. And it comes in all shapes, forms, fashions. Maybe you serve as a greeter. Maybe you're back in kids. Maybe you serve on the worship team. Sometimes if I'm preaching, I'm behind the camera. It does not matter where I'm at. God has give, gifted me and blessed me with a burden to carry out that priority because on the other end of you building scripture promises, there will be multiplication in your life because scripture says that he refreshes those who refresh others. So I want to remind you of that today. It, it could be time like, man, I feel like if I give my time, if I give my resources, if I jump in and wake up and go to load in, if I, man, if I serve on the team, I, I can't leave church right after it's over. I got, I, God's like, listen, just test me. Just, just refresh others and watch what I'll do for you. Cause he will refresh you is what scripture says. And in verse six, Nehemiah, it says this of chapter four, as we kind of roll into point number two, we fast forward just a little bit. They've been working on this wall because he caught the burden to build. They get, they get together, they start building this wall and pick up in chapter four, verse six, it says, so, and this is again, him, him talking first person. He says, so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height for the people worked with all their heart. Point two is this. Once you have answered the call, then give it your whole heart. Give it your whole heart. My hope today is if you're in the room, man, I, I applaud you for being in the room when we know it's a low attended Sunday in church across America. It's right behind a holiday. We get it. People are traveling. There's a lot going on. This is one of those days where it's easy to wake up and be like, man, I ain't feeling it today. I'll come back next week. It's just the way it is. I applaud you for being in the room. You are giving your whole heart. Give it your whole heart. Notice that in the scripture passage, it says that they gave their whole heart to build half a wall. This is very key to check out. It took their whole heart to build half a wall. In my, in my own life, uh, Megan and I and our boys, we committed our whole hearts, our whole lives to move to Nashville and plant and build a church. And there was no promise of people coming, people giving, people do. There was no promise of any of this. This was us and God. That was it. And I was committed to God, I'm gonna give you my whole heart. In the middle of COVID, we're gonna move, we're gonna try interest meetings when we can't reach people. It's been a crazy journey that looked nothing like we planned it out to be. But I'm determined to give God my whole heart because if you give God your whole heart, then he will, he'll make up the other half that you can't meet. But it takes your whole heart to build half a wall, which means for us being on the team, being people that come in and build this thing and we give financially and we serve and we're all in, we're showing up. That means I'm gonna give my all for the half. I'm going to give my all for the half and I'm going to just keep doing that and trust that God will bring about and build the other half. He'll do everything that we can't do. So here's what I want you to take away from this. You do everything you can do and God will do everything you can't do. You do everything you can do and God will do everything you can't do. I think what holds us back more than anything from doing everything we can do is us trying to do what God can only do. I don't know if you relate to this, but I have moments where I worry and I've got fear and anxiety and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, God, what does it take to get more people to be coming and showing up and build this thing and grow it? And God's like, that's not up to you. God reminds me, what I need you to do is give your whole heart. Just You just give your whole heart and then let me do all that in my time because it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon journey. I just turned 38 years old. I'm inching a little closer to 40 and I'm like, I, I feel better with age personally. I like it. It's funny, me and Megan have these conversations. She'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm 36. I'll be like, I'm 38. Yeah, all right. On my way to 40, let's go. I'm sure when I hit 40, I might feel a little different. We'll find out, but we'll see. I, f I feel good though, but I'm determined that I'm going to keep digging in. This is a marathon journey. I'm determined to do this thing till I'm 68, 78, 88. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if I want to go to 98 quite yet. I don't know. I don't really know about that. That's a long, that's a long time, but I'm determined to give my whole heart, even if it means the half. I think what we do in America too many times is we say, God, I'll give you my whole heart. If you give me the whole thing. And then when God doesn't give us the whole thing, we exit. We say stuff like, this church isn't what I thought it was going to be. Or this church isn't what I wanted it to be. We have these different kind of conversations where we start going, God, maybe you're calling me on to something better. 
And I just want to tell somebody today, and this is true for your personal life, your marriage, your workplace, whatever it looks like, the grass is not greener somewhere else. The grass is greener where you water it. The grass is greener where you water it. There are times when the enemy comes in and like a flood, the enemy will hit you with, yeah, you shouldn't have left there. Yeah, you should go on over there. But did God say? Because this is what happens. Look at the first story in scripture. God gives Adam and Eve some direction. He says, you could do all this, but you can't do this thing. And the enemy comes in and he says, did God really say? And I bet you he's usually looking like this, like, come on, I'm your friend. Did God really say that? And then you, you know what? I don't, I don't know if God really said that now that you think about it, because the enemy is always going to tempt you with something quote unquote good. He's never going to come just like with all the bad stuff. He's going to come and say, maybe you should try. I'm telling you, just give this a shot. It'll make your life better. It'll make you feel better. If you leave, it'll make you feel better. Now it'll make you more comfortable, but it won't, it won't make your life better. There's times that comfort can make you feel like your life is better, but usually in the most comfortable places, you're not growing. I want to be growing. I want to be growing in my relationship with God. And I'm just determined that what scripture says is what we will live out is where you are planted. You will be flourishing. So man, it's been a hard journey as we've watched people come and go. And we knew the statistics that you launch a church and in the beginning stages, man, you just, you lose people before you really start beginning to build momentum. And I'm happy to tell you, man, we are beginning to see growth in all of our metrics. Our kids ministry is growing. Some of y'all are having more kids. Praise God. Thank you for building the church, right? There's more of that that's happening. Like the kids ministry is growing. Giving is continuing to grow. Our relationships and reach is continuing to expand. And so I have to look at what God is doing because Because if I'm not careful, I can look at what he's doing right in front of me and say, maybe it's not working. Let me move on to something bigger and better. And God's just going, no, 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 no. You just keep giving your all because you're you're building the half. And when you get to the half, I can build all of it. So let's give God our all to build the half. Because if you can give all to build half, God can build the other half. (laughs) I'm just determined that I'm going to give my all. I would rather give God my all and never see it that ha- never see it happen than not give God my all and go help do something that was that I was never was never called to do. I've got a purpose. You have a purpose, a calling. You're chosen. You're anointed. You're appointed. And I believe it's for such a time as this to build the kingdom of God. And praise God, we get to do it right here at Trove Heights. I just love it, man. I thank God that we get to build the church together. You just got to jump in and dig in. Where can I help? Where's the need? We've always said it like this. Find the need and fill it. Find, where can I help? There's, there's places. We can do this together. I think we got to understand that God wants to do something great in us, but what he wants to do in and through you is not about your performance. It's about your participation. God wants to do great things in you. And usually it's on the other side of here I am, God, I'm going to give you my all. When you give God your all, he'll do new things in your life. I'm telling you, you got to give God your all. You ever, um, been to like a restaurant or been around a person that only gives half their heart. You ever seen that half-hearted restaurants? You ever see those? I'll tell you one restaurant that is not half-hearted is Chick-fil-A. They are wholehearted. That's a wholehearted restaurant. Man, look, you go to, go to Chick-fil-A and then go to Taco Bell. Your experience is going to be completely different. I'm just saying, because look, Chick-fil-A, you always get the my pleasure, don't you? I went to, me me and Megan, we went to a place the other day. Actually, we were, were, I won't say the name of it. We were at a store the other day and Megan walked up and asked for a specific thing. And the lady behind the counter said, why? And I I wasn't even there. I was like, if I would have been there, I'd be like, cause I said so, go get it right now. Customer's always right. That's what I felt like. But I wasn't there in the moment. So she's telling me this. I'm like, what did you say? She said, I said, cause I want it. And I said, are you good? I'm glad you said that. You defended yourself a little bit. Like, why in the world would you answer? You ask that, that at Chick-fil-A. You're like, hey, I need two sriracha sauces, which by the way, that sriracha sauce at Chick-fil-A is legit. Anointed, a little bit of crack in there. I'm just saying, I don't know what it is. It's good stuff. <laughs> you ask, I want two sriracha's and they, they dump it, the whole thing in the back. Okay, cool. You can have as much as you want. That's how we should operate. Is the, we need to have a Chick-fil-A type of mentality in church. Don't y'all think? What if we had Chick-fil-A every Sunday at church? That would be amazing. I wish we could do that. We'll use that as a marketing tool right there. Chick-fil-A every Sunday at church. <laughs> I've seen places that give half their heart. I'm just determined that I want to give a whole heart. I think if we can be a people that give our whole heart, it'll, it'll attract people to say, man, what is going on there? Something's a little different. Because I don't know if y'all know this or not. We are very unique in our city, especially this community that we're in, as far as the type and style of church that we are. 
Uh, you drive up and down through here, there's steeples. Um, there's older churches, you know, Methodist, Baptist. We, we are very unique and that was very intentional. So we are a part of ARC, the Association of Related Churches, and they have planted now over a thousand churches. We were ARC church plant number 964 over the first 20 years of ARC, which I think is amazing. And before we moved here, when we were trying to figure out, okay, now we know it's Nashville, but where do we go in Nashville? I get this, I get this question all the time. Uh, people ask me, I'll say Green Hill. They'll be, they'll be like, Green Hills, huh? That's what they always say. Green Hills, West End. Hmm, okay. You don't look like you belong there. That's what I hear. That's what I hear people say sometimes. I'll be like, hey, I, kn I know what we're talking about here. So ARC has this find a church tool and you can pull up the map and, map and it'll show you all the churches, Mount Juliet. You know, you're over here on the west side of the city. You're down Murfreesboro. You can find all the Franklin. Everybody wants to go to Franklin. Like we're called to Franklin. Are we sure we're called to Franklin? I don't know. And we have all these churches everywhere. And I'm looking on this map and there was this one big pocket on the map. And I'm like, there's no dots on there. So I zoom in. I start looking. I mean, I had never even been here. Start looking at it. And I'm like, huh. All the way down 65, you get all the, all the way over here. You got all, why are there no ARC churches right here? So I called a friend in the city who pastors one of the great churches here, great ARC church. And I said, bro, talk to me. I said, why, why are there no ARC churches in like the Green Hills area, that community right there? And he said, well, I'm gonna tell you exactly why. He said, I don't think guys believe they can go in there and do anything great. And I was like, why, why, why do you say that? He's like, well, it's, there's more, it's more wealthy. There's more established older churches. There's nothing like you that would be here. You would definitely stick out compared to everything else. And I was like, cool, that's where we're going. Green Hill, that was my initial response. Cool, that's why people don't wanna go. That's why we're gonna go. What, you know why? Because we can reach people that these other churches can't. And we knew that it might come at the expense of a slow build and a grind, but I was determined because I believe we have something unique that God has blessed us with and called us to do and people to reach that if we just give it our whole heart, God will build everything else. I'm just a firm believer in that. And so here we are today and we're just going through the process. And the best part about it to me is my man EJ back here behind this camera. I get to come out and hang out with EJ on a Sunday and worship together and laugh together and talk college football. And then we get to turn our attention to God and get in the presence of the Lord. I think it's amazing. There's nowhere I'd rather be. I love that I get to do what I get to do. It's amazing that we get to jump in and do this together. Now the word wholehearted has a meaning that is probably different than what we would say, like I'm all in. Y'all know that term, I'm all in. People in today's culture, I'm all in. Well, wholehearted, all in means this, marked by complete, earnest commitment. Then it gives a little more, free from all reserve or hesitation. I'm all in, a synonym for that is all embracing. I'm all in, I'm committed. Nothing is gonna change it. I love how it says earnest commitment, meaning there's a urgency to this thing. Like it's not just like, oh, well, we'll get to it another time. Oh, well, we'll try it next time. Oh, I'll do it next month. No, man, there's an earnest commitment to this thing. Again, I applaud you guys that are in the room that are on the team and making this thing happen every week and being able to provide an online service for people to watch and be a part of. Man, we're all in on this thing. There's an earnest commitment that has to happen that if we do, God will do something that we never could have imagined. So jump into small groups, take the 12-month challenge. If you've never been in a small group or you've been inconsistent with that, just get committed to it. If you're watching online, we have multiple virtual small groups every semester that you can be a part of. We'll end our current fall semester next week and then we'll kick back off in January. There will be brand new small groups, brand new opportunities to get plugged in, but dig in and be a part of it. If you've never gone through the growth track, go through the growth track. After you go through the growth track, we're gonna help you discover your gifts and the purpose that God put inside of you. And maybe you'll find out, you know, I could lead a small group. Maybe you've been in a small group for a while. It's time to lead a group. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. Just be like, you know what? I like to eat. You like to eat? Cool, let's go here. Just show up and eat, okay? I'm just telling you, get around a group of people, put Jesus in the middle of it. Lead a small group. You can do that. Maybe you're like, I don't, I don't really know that I wanna greet people at the door. I can't sing. I don't really wanna go back there with kids. I don't know where. Show up at load in at 6 a.m. on a Sunday. We have a lot of fun. We have a good time together. And then after church, we go eat and we crash. You sleep good. You take a good nap every Sunday, okay? There's all kinds of things that'll come out of that. But just make a commitment and jump in somewhere and give all your heart and watch what God will do. Because I can give my whole even for the half. I'm committed to that. What would happen if you gave your whole in your marriage? What would happen if you gave your whole? But what about the other half? She needs to, he needs to. No, you give your all for the half and I think God will take care of that other half. 
Do it in your finances. Do it in your marriage. But I've tried everything. I don't see it. Stop trying and give your whole heart and just watch what God might do. Just give your whole heart. Give your whole heart. Give your whole heart. Battle for your marriage. Battle for your finances. That's what it looks like. Stand firm. Christ, my firm foundation. Firm foundation. Give your whole. You know, God gave his whole when he gave us Jesus. He gave his one and only son. Now, what if he would have been like, Jesus, I'm just going to ask you to go down there and take some lashes on your back and that's going to be it. We'll, we'll take care of a little bit of it. What if that was what it was? What if we would have been left having to pay for our own sins? He gave his whole. He gave his whole. And he did that without you giving anything. That's what blows my mind is he said, look, I'm going to give you my whole even if you never give me a zero. And he's just inviting you and in. give me your all and watch what God will do. Pick up in Nehemiah chapter six. Again, he, he sees this in verse one, verse two. You got this guy named Sanballat. Sanballat is the name. Really cool name, Sanballat. <laughs> name, that, name your kid that, Sanballat. Sanballat shows up and they send this message and they say this. He's doing this thing. He's doing this work. And they send a message. They say this in verse two of Nehemiah six. Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Now, I'm just going to say that it goes without saying that if someone tells you to meet them at Ono, probably shouldn't go to that place right there. I don't know nothing about no Ono, but I ain't trying to go to Ono, okay? You get that text at 1.30 a.m. Don't go to Ono. I'm just saying, don't do all that. Like, you know, you know what Ono is for you. Don't, don't go to Ono. You turn, that, you turn that down. You don't need all that, okay? Here's what his response is in verses two through four. Here's what his response is. They were scheming to harm me. Oh no, it's always harm me on the other end. So I sent messengers back to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and I cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. I'm carrying on a great project and I cannot come down. There's gonna be people that try to tell you, you know what? Somebody left the church and now they're just kind of floundering because here, here's the deal. You can fly, flourish or flounder, but you cannot do both. There's no in between. You can flourish in the house of the Lord or you're going to flounder trying to figure it out on your own. Somebody's going to be out there floundering, just saying, ah, you don't need to be there no more. You got to tell them I'm carrying on a great work and I cannot come down. You, that movie is that you, you really feel like somebody wants to invite you to watch, but you know, you shouldn't go there. Remind them I'm carrying on a great work and I cannot come down. I, I'm just a firm believer that I don't want anything to hinder the work that God has called me to. I want to be all in, man. I want to be all in. You're carrying on a great project and you cannot come down. Take that 12 month, take that 12 month, month challenge, man. Be all in on, I'm going to be all in. I'm going to be at church every time the doors are open. I'm going to invite people. I'm going to give, I'm going to serve. You know why? Not because God can't do it without me. Here, now here's the problem too. Here's this, this is a whole nother side note. We get in these spaces, I think in ministry where we start questioning, God, is it me? God, am I doing something wrong? Have I done something wrong? We, what kind of pride is it where we think we can halt what God wants to do? Like God can do whatever he wants to do. He'll use you or me irregardless of what we got going on. So I'm just a firm believer that I'm just gonna go in and say, God, you can have my all no matter what it looks like. And after you give God your whole heart, you need to do the third thing. And that is stay posted. Stay posted, man. Posted means to affix to a usual place. When people think of you, where do they think of your usual place? Like I, I, I want people to be like, do you ever leave the church? <laughs> like, I think, that, I think that speaks volumes to people. My usual place is in the house of the Lord. My usual place is in the presence of God with my kids. My usual place is to dig in into prayer and the word. And when you do that, people take notice and they, they can't miss it. They know you gotta stay posted. So you can do this all kinds of ways. You could do this through social media. You can make your social media be a place where you only give Jesus. I only give life and hope and encouragement. I give people Jesus. You can put bumper stickers on your car if you want to do that. I, your boy don't do that, but you can do that if you want to. Put some bumper stickers on your car. You can do it through music. How about your language? What is your usual language? Because what you usually do is what people think of you. What you usually do, the, who are you, that's who you usually are to people. I want to be in such a place where people go, man, this, this dude just won't leave. He won't change. He's just, he won't stop. He won't stop church. He won't stop the word. He won't stop prayer. No, I'm going to give God my whole heart. I'm going to stay Posted. Don't leave your post today. Let me remind somebody, don't leave your post. The enemy's goal is to get you to leave your post. This is his goal. 
And when you leave your post, it's easy to go get comfortable. And then it's really hard to go back to your post once you leave it. But your ambition to change the world has to be bigger than your ambition to be comfortable. My, I, got, I got to have an ambition to change the world. I don't know. Again, you can't do it all, but you can do something. I can't do everything, but I can do something. So God, today, I give you my whole heart. I'm committed to stay here. I'm locked in no matter what's on the other side of it, no matter what it looks and feels like. I'm, I'm committed, God. I, wanna, I want you to use me to change the world. You know, if you ask God to use you, he will. I think most Christians, we stop at God save me and he will. And the moment you invite him in, that's done. But there's so much more he wants to use you to do. He wants to, he wants to do through you and in you. It comes on the other end of God use me, God use me. So let me remind you of your project today. We have seen today 66 salvations through the, this church to date. I think that's huge. 66 people that weren't going to heaven that now are, that's a big deal. We just fed 50 plus families last week for Thanksgiving because we jumped in and we said, I'm gonna stay posted. We can't do it all, but we can do it. Man, well, we're little, we can't make a difference. Yes, we can. We can make a difference with what we have. God's not gonna give you something bigger until you are using what he currently gave you. And that's what I stay reminded with. Man, I'd love to have this room full of people, but God, I'm gonna use all that we have and give you my whole heart. And I'm telling you, if we all do that, God will do something great. We have had 60,000 plus online views of a service since we came to Nashville across all of our platforms. I think that's unbelievable. That blows my mind at times. That's incredible. We have had uh, certain reels that had hundreds of thousands. We even had a reel on Instagram hit 5 million plays. That's unbelievable. So I have to look at these places and go, okay, it might not be right here in the moment as I'm preaching, but let me just tell y'all, if none of y'all showed up, man, I will preach my guts out because God has called me to this thing. I'm gonna give my whole heart. I'm gonna stay posted and God will bring fruit out of that and he'll do it in your life too. And I want you to see this as you begin to do this and you stay posted and you do it for your city and your family. You do it for your workplace. You do it with your finances and your marriage and you begin to give God your all. You're gonna see Jesus woven throughout the whole thing. And this scripture has a parallel in the New Testament. Mark chapter 15, verse 29, you see Jesus hanging on the cross. He's hanging there. He's, he's bloodied, he's beat up, says mangled beyond recognition, couldn't even see what he looked like. Who is that? He's hanging on this cross. And in verse 30, verse 29, it says, those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, They said, come down from the cross and save yourself. If you're really gonna do that, you need to do this. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. So let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified next to him also heaped insults on him. Man, when you're given your all, people aren't gonna understand it. When you're all in and committed to a cause, people aren't gonna understand it but they don't have to. Just give them Jesus. Just, just stay committed. Notice that they're doing the exact same thing. Hey, come down from there. I'm carrying on a great work and I cannot come down. That's exactly what's happening with Jesus. Jesus is saying, I am carrying on a great work up here and I cannot come down. Man, I'm so thankful that he didn't come down, aren't you? I'm so thankful that he stayed on that cross for us because he could have come down if he wanted to. So today, look at him at his post and it'll help you stay posted. If you just remember what a mess you were, I was, I was a mess and he stayed posted on that cross for me. And so the least I can do is say, God, here's my whole heart. I must stay posted. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. I'm committed, God. Thank you for saving my life. I'll, you can use me to do whatever you want to do. If that's reach one, amazing. If that's reach a million, amazing. I don't care what it is, God. I'm, I'm here. I'm posted. Thank you for staying posted for me. You're called to build the kingdom of God, man. And I'm telling you, if you want reminders, I'm gonna give you a few scripture reminders as we close today. Verses about what you're called to do. Blessed with a burden to build. Luke 19, 10, it says, the son of man came to seek and save the lost. That's what you're called to do. That's what we're called to do. Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all of creation. Corinthians 9, 22, it says, I have become all things to all people that by all means, someone might be saved. Just anybody, somebody just gonna get saved. I'm gonna give my all. Matthew 9, 37, therefore, I'm gonna encourage you, church, people watching online, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Pray earnestly. Again, the devil can't keep you from reaching the harvest unless he gets you to walk away from it. 
or not get in the game at all in the first place. I just, I'm all in, whatever it takes. I will, I will give you my all, God. God, I'm gonna give you my all. And I'm gonna stay posted on this thing. Because 1 Peter 2, 9 says this, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. For what reason? That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Anybody, anybody been called out of darkness into light? Oh man, I was in such a dark place and God put me into his marvelous light. Everybody wants what we have. Everybody wants what you have. It's good news. It's good news. I'm gonna give him my all today. And this is kind of where, where I wanna leave you with today. Acts chapter one, verse eight, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it says, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. We talk about this in the growth track. If you've never been a part of it, that is our city, our country, and our world. Jerusalem for us is Nashville. You get in the presence of God and he'll prompt you to reach Nashville. So you don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. But when we collectively come together as a unit under the vision of a house, Trove Heights, we can begin to reach Nashville and reach people that otherwise weren't being reached. And that's our goal. This is what, this is what God needs from you today, okay? Isaiah 6, 8. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am send me. Today, whether you're in the room or you're online, God is saying that to you. Who will go? Who shall I send? Who's willing and ready to be used and to do more? Because God doesn't need your abilities. He needs your availabilities. And if he gets your availability, then he can use your abilities. So you just got to be available. Thank you for being in the room and for being available. Thank you for helping us build the church. Thank you for sowing into the church. Thank you for helping us reach people online. So glad we get to do what we get to do. But it's all for the bigger picture, and that is to reach a city. It's to reach Nashville. I, I want to see the city of Nashville reached for Jesus. Every time I look at these pictures and I see these cars, this stadium is full right now of people at a football game that need Jesus. Some of them have Jesus. Some of them don't but we can reach them. Think about all the people that are out there. Two million people. How many of them are in church? How many of them are not? We moved here to reach that city and I'm still committed to doing that today. Anybody else? Whom shall I send? He's asking, Who, whom shall I send? Here I am. Here I am, God send me. And so today, that's, that's the way I wanna close our service today just for the few of us that are here is I just wanna kinda just reposture ourselves in a way where we say, God, I'm answering the call. You can have my whole heart and I'm gonna stay posted no matter what. I'm recommitting to, to do that to do today, God, from this day forward. And so right here in this room, watching online, every head bowed, every eye closed, let's have, have a moment just, you talk to God, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna ask God, God talk to me. I need you today, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm here to answer the call today. I'm gonna give you my whole heart. I'm gonna stay posted on this thing, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. God, it's a grind. It's hard at times. It doesn't always look like we might've thought, but God, we know on the other end of our all, God, you, you're going to do the rest. So today I pray that you strengthen anybody in this room, anybody watching online, any of us who are serving, no matter where we're at today, God, strengthen us and remind us of the great why that you have given us. And it's to reach a city. It's to reach people for you. Remind us all of that today, God. We might, be, we might be serving in this very moment, but I pray you stir something in our hearts that reminds us of what we're called to do. God, we're committed. We're just right there. Just tell him, just say, here I am, God. Send me here. Here I am. Send me, God. I want to be used. Help me make a greater difference. Thank you that we get to be a part of this. God, today I pray for a fresh wind for everybody. Thank you for the incredible holiday week that we've had. Time off working with family. God, give us all a fresh wind as we go into this December coming up. God, do great things in this church. God, we give you our all today. And if you're in the room or you're watching online and maybe you've never even started, you can't give God your all till you first give him your heart. And if you haven't done that before and you know you need to do that, you can say a prayer with me right now. If you did that at some point, but you wandered away and you just stopped giving God anything and you just want to say, God, I'm coming back. I'm going to give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give it all to you again. You can do that right here and right now. And all it requires is a prayer, a simple prayer. According to scripture, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, he's savior and Lord, you're saved. You're going to go to heaven. And so maybe that, that's a first time commitment for you today. Maybe that's a recommitment, but let's take a moment and just recommit to God right there where we're at. And you can say something like this, say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Today I commit to you. I recommit to you my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth 
You're my Savior. You're my Lord. God, I'm giving you my all today for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God praise for anybody that said that prayer, for what he's doing today, for what he's doing beyond this point. I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful that we get to come have church together every week. I'm grateful that we can give these opportunities. If you're watching online and you're like, man, I, I don't know what just happened, but I'm, I'm glad I'm going all in. Man, we wanna know more. We wanna help you. And so if you came in the room today, y'all know the drill. You got a connect card. If you need to update your information, you can do that on there. If you want to check a box, if you need prayer, it's my first time watching. It's my first time being a part of this thing. Let us know that on your screen, you'll see the word connect. You can text it to that number that you see right there on your screen. There's a link that it'll send you. Just click that link, fill out that digital connect card. And uh, if you just want to connect and talk to a pastor, I'd love to reach out to you. You can do that. If you made a decision for Jesus, let us know that, especially if it's your first time, let us know that so we can figure out next steps that we wanna help you with because that is part of the journey is it's a journey. This is the starting point. We wanna help you with what comes on beyond this point. So do that for us today. There is a lot coming up around Trove Heights that you can be a part of. Even if you're watching online, we're gonna have Vision Sunday coming up next week. You'll be able to watch that next Sunday right there where you're at. And I'm gonna cast vision around where we're going for 2023. We got a lot of updates, new, new things we're gonna be rolling out that we've never done. I, I can't wait to tell y'all about it. I've been saving it for weeks. I wanted to tell y'all like seven weeks ago, but I, I gotta wait for next week, okay? So be in the room for Vision Sunday. You're gonna find out like, hey, I'm a part of this church. I'm in, what are we, where are we going? What are we doing? That's what we're gonna talk about next week. The following week is our annual Legacy offering. It'll be Legacy Sunday. And so we've been talking about it for a few weeks. Everybody just pray now. We're praying like, God, what are we gonna do? What do you want us to do to advance this vision that you gave us and make it, go somewhere new and bigger and better and brighter in 2023. So we'll do all that together. And then Christmas at Trove Heights on the 18th. So a lot of fun stuff happening. Growth track will happen next week. If you've never been through that or a part of it, jump in. We'll do that together next week. Step one and step two will be the following week. And we'll dig into that. But before we leave, we'll worship God with our giving for a moment. If you're, doing, if you're watching online, you could do that right there from where you're at. Uh, if it's your first time with us, feel no pressure to give. To those of you that do call Trove Heights home, whether it's in person or online, thank you for the way that you do give. Uh, you can be a part of that through uh, giving online. You can do that text to give. If you'd like to give in the room, ushers will be in the back. Y'all know the drill there. You can do that on your way out if you'd like. But let's take a moment. We're gonna worship God with our giving before we leave today. Let's stand. We're gonna give him our best to close our service. We'll worship together and then we'll roll into our week. It's about to be December, y'all. I can't believe it. It's a lot ahead. There's gonna be a lot of fun stuff. So be a bringer, invite somebody. Let's get ready for a big month ahead and what God wants to do. Let's worship God with our giving before we leave. God, today we give you all of our hearts today. Today we give you back what's already yours. Thank you for what you've given us financially. We sow back into your kingdom. Do great things through what we give here today. We bless you. Give us peace as we go out today. Bless our week. We give you our all today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together. Come on. don't end our week they start our week so go out there be a light and let's build let's build the kingdom together in Jesus name so y'all have a great week and we'll see you next week